Oh man, I feel like the weirdest person. Hi, I'm Bodie Werner, and this is The Creativity Show, where we hope to help you gain greater access to your creativity, the confidence to express it, and the courage to share it with others. We will be sharing many conversations with all sorts of interesting and creative people, and showing you our creative endeavors, making everything from our home to movies. Today, we're going to share a discussion we had with Lisa Fitzpatrick in 2019 before COVID. She is the director of the Viz Lab and the Mad Lab at UMD. She's one of the many locals pioneering interest in the video production and entertainment industry. The Mad Lab is the most state-of-the-art and impressive green screen soundstage in the area, and she's the one who created it. Lisa is also a climate activist, a futurist, and an all-around interesting person. You may have noticed this unique camera angle. This setup that I'm using is a camera attached to my body and it's called a Snorri Cam. This is my own DIY version of the Snorri Cam. Whoa. Whoa. Mine's a little wobblier than most because it's sort of loosely attached to my body, but it allows you to get that uh, sort of intimate perspective. You're connected to me as the viewer. So Wikipedia says, it gets its name from two Icelandic photographers and directors whose last names were Snorri. But I like to call it the professional selfie stick. The professional selfie stick has been used in film for years. We've all seen it. Requiem for a Dream, The Hangover, 28 Weeks Later. The earliest movie that the professional selfie stick was used for was in 1932. I am using mine for a short film but more on that later. So you can see my posture is a little bit funky. I lean back, I like hunch. I kind of stick my pelvis out. Right now underneath my shirt in the front and the back I have pads just to make it somewhat comfortable. But basically it takes some tweaking. It's ragtag, but it does the trick. Get that drunk look. Yeah. Or you could go in real close. What was that? Did you hear something? I swear I heard something. Now, now I'm gonna do the rest in front of the teleprompter because this, this is not that comfortable. Before we get to our discussion with Lisa, I wanna let you know we will be sharing many of these conversations that we've done with regional and local creatives. We've been doing them for a year, all before COVID though. In the coming weeks, we will be focusing on creatives who are in the video, film, and TV industry because Catalyst Content Festival 2020 is coming up in October and we wanna ramp up to that by sharing these conversations. The Catalyst Content Festival this year will be virtual but we are going to be sharing conversations we did with creatives at Catalyst 2019. Okay, without further ado, here is our conversation with Lisa Fitzpatrick. Enjoy. But in a few minutes, I'm gonna come back to you and let you know what's coming up on the Creativity Show. All right. Your host, thank you. It just is, just, it's so beautiful, calming, and inspiring kind of at the same time. And just we should be recording this, are we? <laughs> I can say that again because yes. it's easy enough. Yeah. And I'm cold. <laughs> so here we are on that end, hot. And on this end, so cold. <laughs> Bodie, you can be in the middle. Just, just <laughs> look warm. <laughs> yeah, my toes, my toes yeah. are cold, and I have my really woolly socks on and everything. And Whereas I, I, I love uh, the temperatures here. Oh, and I love being outside. I love skiing. I love the cold. I, li I mean, yeah. there's nothing better than snow. And I, yeah. yeah, I really, and then just being inside and, and, and wandering about your house, I just, every time I come over, I just love to be here because the atmosphere is so um, calming and um, energizing in a way in this, at the same time. And then the way that you have things, it's just really beautiful. It's, it's, a, it's a pleasure for the senses. Hi there, this is The Creativity Show and I am your co-host, Bodie Werner.
Turner. And I'm Claire Cooley. And today we're here with Lisa Fitzpatrick, director of the Viz Lab and the Mad Lab and futurist up at UMD. Thanks for being here today. Well, thank you for inviting me. It's a delight to have you here. And um, we'd like to ask you some questions about, uh, the first question I'd like to ask is, what is a futurist? Okay, a futurist is somebody who um, basically it calculates uh, what are likely trends. Um, what are, in my case, because my work is with technology, high tech, I've been looking at trends in, in high tech for since uh, 2000. Well, actually, since before then, when I was in grad school, because my um, master's in uh, technical communication and rhetoric, uh, for my master's degree that I got in 2000, I studied video games, which was so unusual in academia at that point in time um, that there was no other, there were no other references to, to video games. Um, and I studied influences that they could have on children mm. and, um, and the sensory experiences of young children. And I, yeah, so I, I knew that video games would be more and more um, important in our society and that society would become more and more gamified. Um, and that was, I started that study in 1996 with that theory. Wow. So that yeah, was futuristic that was right there. Right. Um, prior to that, I'm, I, I also have a degree in graphic design and I just, I don't know why I really like the looks of things like, I don't know how to, I don't know what that has to do with the future, but somehow it does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 But it, yeah, um, influencing. Right, mm -hmm. right. Um, well, this is a little uh, segue to something else, but as you walked through the Emerald Lady today on, on our tour, mm -hmm. uh, creative experience, um, what's your overall feelings or impressions? thoughts about this environment? Um, it's a very uh, inspiring and nurturing environment. Um, it, you know, it is a lot of fun to come here um, and because it's always, it's always a little different and um, has quirky, fun touches everywhere. And it's just beautiful. Thank you. And Thank you. amazing. Thank you very much. And for me, one of my callings is to uh, help people feel their feelings, to be able to have access to them. And so, as you say, quirky, that I find as a, an incredible compliment because that means different, that means unusual, and that can stimulate feelings which initiate thoughts, which make us smarter, and hopefully uh, with contemplative time make us wiser and more compassionate. At the Creativity Show, we are trying to share the most inexhaustible resource, or the only inexhaustible resource we have as human beings, which is love and imagination. So let us increase that. Uh, by sharing our love and imagination with the world. So that's, that's, our, that's our mission. And I always ask uh, every guest the same three questions. And the first one is, and there are no wrong answers, and it could change later, and all okay. that is good. So um, be relaxed about it. And, and what is creativity? Oh, what is creativity? <laughs> To you. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> I feel like I should quote the poet Yeats or something. Creativity, or one of the French poets of the, the you know, whatever. Um, what is creativity? Uh, 
it's um, taking what you have at the moment and playing with it and enjoying yourself in the moment. Beautiful. That's beautiful. I like that. that is really beautiful and it's very helpful. That's a very helpful answer. Take and that, you <laughs> <laughs> So my second question is what hinders creativity? Um, well, just not being comfortable, you know, like so if you're any kind of uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. um, if you're too cold, if you're too hot, that's what comes to mind right away because okay. my feet were cold and now you're they are warm because we have, toes. I was roasting my toes. Um, or if you're just feeling uncomfortable in a space. Mm -hmm. um, and my last question is what enhances creativity? I think uh, immediately friendship, love, just, um, yeah. Nice, yeah. my answer. <laughs> Beautiful. Simple. I love I love simple um, answers. So now um, we're going to bring out the notes I took as Lisa joined us on a tour of the Emerald Lady, which has become a opportunity to do what I love to do and uh, help people get more connected to their own imaginations and the confidence uh, to share it and the courage to express it. So what we do is walk through the Emerald Lady, which as uh, a young lady said recently, is a living museum with the heart of a home. And yes, mm -hmm. I get to fill my home with creativity and um, make it into a sanctuary to the imagination. So we walk through, and um, as I do with everyone, I ask Lisa to close her eyes and deep breathe. And with her yogic training, her breaths were long and deep. <clears throat> so the list of things through the house that she felt I'm going to read and then we're going to do something with it. Okay. Brightness, illumination, mesmerizing, spicy, <laughs> sky, orange chrysanthemum, bird's nest, laughter, trembling crystal, inside and outside, effortful, energy, and some of the things you said, it's a pleasure for the senses, beautiful, calming, and inspiring, calming and energizing at the same time. So we're going to turn your words, with your permission, into a prose. Mad Libs. Mm -hmm. Are we doing Mad Libs? In order to turn these feelings that uh, Lisa had throughout the Emerald Lady into a spontaneous prose, I'm just going to read them again. Okay. <clears throat> and as I read them, you get to arrange them in the order that turns them into prose. And you don't have to add anything or take anything away unless okay. you want to. No rules. No rules. Make it into a story if you want. A story, prose, poem, whatever you want. Brightness, illumination, mesmerizing, spicy sky, orange chrysanthemum, bird nest, laughter, trembling crystal, inside and out, effortful energy. All right, quick break. Soon we will be releasing our first of a handful of music videos. Back in April, we shot five local bands at our musicians' showcase. I shot them with a two-camera setup, both cameras shooting anamorphic. It was a blast to shoot, and I just love the way that it turned out. The look is amazing. Can't wait to share these local, talented musicians with you soon. Our first video will be Elias Mokel, a voice instructor at UMD. He performs Elvis Presley's It's Now or Never. 
My goal with these music videos was to capture these wonderful artists in their best light and share it with you in the most cinematic way possible. All of the music videos will be in 8K resolution. Currently, YouTube is the only way you can watch it at that resolution, but we will be putting them out on other platforms like Facebook and Instagram so you can watch them wherever you'd like. In a few minutes, I'll get back to you and let you know who is the next creative discussion person. Who is the person in our next creative discussion? Yep, yeah, that's the one. On the creativity show, I love to take people on what one woman said was a creative experience as we go through the house. And as joyous as it is for me to express my imagination, it's also equally joyous for me to help other people get more in touch with their own feelings that initiate thoughts, their own imaginations where we can heal ourselves, imagine you know, solutions to our problems and combine our energies with other people to collaborate creatively and compassionately to solve the problems in the world. So um, I'm all about expressing our feelings and imagination. So as we walk through the house, these are the things that Lisa felt. I'm going to read them and then Lisa's going to share what creatively, spontaneously, she just turned into a little piece. Brightness, illumination, mesmerizing, spicy, sky, orange chrysanthemum, bird nest, laughter, trembling crystal, inside and outside, effortful energy. Okay, so um, I just liked the image of the orange chrysanthemums and the blue sky. That was what kind of got me going. So orange chrysanthemums illuminate the brightness of the sky, mesmerizing the spicy, effortful energy inside and outside the bird nest with laughter. Uh, isn't that incredibly beautiful, how just walking through a place, stopping and taking some deep breaths, closing our eyes, and writing down the feelings that was the first thing that came to her mind, turns into a gorgeous, gorgeous uh, I, I prose, poem, I'm not sure um, what the literary term for it is, but Gorgeous, yeah. yeah, gorgeous. It's it's it was really, fun to do. It was lovely. And um, we are in a time where we need all of the people to, you know, love the planet, love one another, and be in touch with our feelings to initiate thoughts and then have contemplative time to turn that into meaningful connections and wisdom and then combine those energies with others to help our gorgeous planet uh, support this miraculous life that lives on it that we're part of. So um, I'm very, very happy that such an intellectually developed person as yourself <laughs> and such a um, capable to uh, discern facts and, and do you know scientific work and the labs are full of, can also access her heart and her feelings and uh, use them to help yourself in the world. So I'm gonna turn it to Bodhi now to talk about, uh, to ask some questions about what's your work and what's important to you. Yeah, so I'll ask some boring questions. Okay. <laughs> um, there are no boring questions. They're boring questions, but I don't think the answers are boring. So, just what's a, what is a day in your work like, like a human being? Um, I don't really know what's going to happen on the day. It's every day is is pretty different, um, and 
I've been working to, we're looking at getting some new equipment um, that is combines EEG with virtual reality and potentially with um, eye gaze tracking glasses. And um, so I am, I'm talking with, I have to track down people in uh, communication science disorders, mechanical engineering, and uh, computer sciences, just to talk with them about what, what will suit their needs and what they imagine doing with this uh, new technology. Um, and there's, I, and then I have to talk to vendors, and uh, then, um, then we'd like to have a demo, and you know, things like that. So that's what I was working on yesterday. Um, and I, I also am training, I have new students and they're very excited. And so we're, we're talking about things that, uh, new projects. Um, we are working on virtual reality simulations, just finishing one up. And we found out that uh, the Mac is not, not ready for virtual reality that it is, they have not, um, yeah, they have not maximized Macintosh computers for VR goggles. So, uh, the, yeah, so I'll All just right. leave that at that. So we have to go back to doing what we were doing before. And then the other thing was that the, the different game engines that you use to build a VR, uh, VR simulation do different things and, I don't know. So it's it's keeping track of all that stuff. It's working with different people, and also um, just taking break and walking uh, to like kickstart uh, my brain again from like the mundane things that I have to do. Which was also we had a, a huge electrical surge um, in one of those many uh, very strange thunderstorms and weird weather that we had all in the fall and so uh, it killed um, five power supplies for these uh, giant force plates that are like giant scales and so then when I con contacted that company they were saying that I, we had to purchase from them and they had a huge markup and so then we did the research to, fi to find where the manufacturer of these things and then see if they were the same and I called an electrician in to talk to me and help me out with that because that's not my area of expertise mm -hmm. and so that's not very interesting but that's the kind of things I have to do and that's just kind of more on the technology and more sciencey end right and it's only one and that's just yesterday it. that is basically yesterday yep mm -hmm. wow. Mm -hmm. Sounds like you're overseeing a tremendous amount. What struck me when I went to the Mad Lab, um, this isn't even talking about the Viz Lab, so this will give you an idea of how intricate her workload is. Um, when I went to the Mad Lab, I saw, first thing I saw is it's a green screen setup. It's a studio with video switchers, and you've got an audio recording booth. So, you know, things that are set up for the TV and film industry. But then added to the mix, you have these force plates, like you were saying, to which are not commonly associated with the entertainment industry. So in the middle of this entertainment studio, you have very scientific equipment. Yeah. So to talk a little bit about the intersection and how the Mad Lab services both the entertainment and science and who would come up with such a crazy idea in the first place? Um, there was a call at, at, for uh, proposals uh, for for a large grant from the main U, from the Twin Cities, and um, from the Office of the Vice President of Research. And so I gathered together a team of professors who were interested um, in putting together an, some ideas. And so each one from theater, art, um, mechanical engineering, biomechanics, and computer science. This was about nine years ago, no, nine or ten years ago. Um, 
yeah, nine years ago. Each one came up with an idea and some were the same, you know, that each other could use and different. So it was basically uh, ca coming up with motion capture um, and a television production studio, uh, full, full on. Mm -hmm. And um, virtual reality actually had not become ready for any kind of prime time at that point in time, but we wanted to make it so that we could grow into new different technologies. The force plates we also were, were not sure about. So it was basically these five professors and I wrote this grant to get the studio built. And mm -hmm. that's the short story of it. Gotcha. <laughs> so mm -hmm. working with people from all these different disciplines. And mm -hmm. then we got a new grant last summer. Um, and that's why I'm talking to them about the the EEG monitor, the glasses, and the VR. So that's to get this new equipment and sure. adding new people into the group um, because it's it just makes things more, I don't know, it's more interesting. And so, you know, we have a professor now from Communication Science Disorders who's joined us as well as a professor from um, Civil Engineering. Wow. You know, so we, and I, I, and these people would probably never work together normally. No, no, no. The, the labs are a place for people from uh, all different disciplines or areas to come and have an idea and maybe we can do something with it and maybe not. And usually if, I, if we can't do something, then I know where they can go mm -hmm. or who can or whatever. I put together teams of people. Nice. So, yeah. Well, that's a skill in itself, is to be able to combine all those different expertises and different perspectives into a, a functional lab. Uh, that's quite a skill set to yeah. bring that all together, how it all connects. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, what is, uh, I mean, I can tell there's so much that you have to oversee that that's got to be kind of um, rewarding and taxing in some <laughs> ways. So how do you, what would be your advice for yourself just starting out making the Mad Lab? What, what would be your bit of advice on how to handle a tremendous amount of complexity? Because your job is akin to, you know, maybe somebody who's making a movie or a TV show who has to oversee a lot of different... A yeah. showrunner. Right? Yeah, a showrunner. Um, I, I guess I kind of thought my, of myself as a producer because yeah. I, I tend to, when we did, we did a first um, virtual reality simulation and I, I figured out all the, all the different things that were going to be necessary mm -hmm. and also what the storyline was going to be and how, how we would be able to do it and who would be able to and so on. So putting, and then made another lab that's like this around, as you said, you, there isn't another space that combine such interdisciplinary things and so um, I just sort of forged out on my own I did I went out to New York City um, to look at because I hadn't ever built a video production lab let alone anything else I you know my my degree was in Russian um, so I went to New York City to look at what they do because why New York City small spaces hmm tight and mm -hmm. we didn't I knew and maybe not so much money I didn't go out to California because they have you know they spread out a lot of money blah 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 you huge know sound huge stages. sound stages yeah. so I wanted to see how how could they do this in New York City and I got a lot of help from people in New York City nice. um, from NYU they were very very helpful to me very nice and from some sound stages and I talked to a lot of people there and people say New York they're not friendly well yeah, they're just you know you got to be efficient and so yeah um, that was a really good thing for me to do um, and to go and see I went to see the NBC studios and just looked around and, and got ideas and and talked to people and if I did uh, that's what I always do if I don't know how to do something I find somebody who does and yeah yeah so you started out humble and open and mm -hmm. collected 
uh, information from people that knew what they were talking about. So yeah. that's yeah. great advice for anyone, and you started there, so yeah, nice. So that's why confident too your... you can stay centered and calm through all the complexity is, I think, that humility mm -hmm. that you have. And you don't think you're all that, but you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so, I mean, I'm pretty obsessed with uh, the developments that are happening in town in the film and TV industry, and I just couldn't be more excited about the momentum that's building here. Um, you've been ahead of the curve, you know, creating a television studio in the UMD. What do you think about the sort of groundswell that's happening, you know, the new festival that's come to Oh, I, I think it's great. I think it's wonderful. Um, and I, uh, yeah, I am, I would also define myself as a futurist. I, that's been my job for 20 years. I've been having to look at, okay, what's the next new thing? What's the next new thing in technology? And I look in general at the world. So the next new thing in, you know, well, honestly, the next new thing that's happening is the climate crisis. And so we have to, I'm yeah. not answering your question right now. No, but, that's okay. Take it wherever you want. It's um, your prerogative. But we have to work to solve that. Regarding your question about the film stuff popping up in Duluth, I think it's I think it's wonderful. Um, I I I like the idea of the job creation that it can have, and the, there are so many different kinds of jobs. Uh, you know, hairdressers, mm -hmm. uh, stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. Set builders, makeup artists. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of jobs that don't involve, you know. Um, destroying things. It, it, they're jobs that are creative jobs. It's a creative mm -hmm. economy and um, and it's it's fun too. Um, I back in 2003, in the olden days of 2003, I had a gut feeling that video was going to be bigger and bigger. Actually it was before that and so I, I took it upon myself to just learn all I could. I, I learned how to, I learned Final Cut Pro, which was Mac's uh, video editing program, mm -hmm. and I kind of learned it inside and out. Um, there had been this Avid and Media 100, which were kind of bigger and more complicated programs. Final Cut Pro was sort of the first um, consumer one, and that worked really well. Adobe had the Premiere. But at that point in time, Premiere was not really ready for prime time. They'd had it around, but they hadn't really supported it so well. So anyway, long story short, um, I really trained myself up on doing video editing and video production um, so that when um, then in 2005 or six, um, YouTube started and I was ready. Uh, we, I started the first UMD YouTube channel, and I f focused on the things that UMD that I considered important, which were sciences, engineering, and arts. Mm -hmm. And so that's mostly what what the UMD YouTube channel covered. And then I, I made categories and whatnot, and I linked in with the main U. And so, you know, they publicized our stuff from UMD and. But yeah, and so I did that for about seven years or so until, you know, we got the big grant and started making the big lab and blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And the PR department realized that, golly gee, oh, I shouldn't say that, but that they... That, <laughs> it's all right, yeah, editing. <laughs> um, until the PR department, uh, uh, they hired a videographer, and it's really great. So now <laughs> UMD has really nice um, video stuff and so on. Excellent. So, yeah. A futurist. Um, I want to ask a little bit about that. Um, at, when I was 14 I had a, one of those moments of, of great doubt and um, trepidation about growing up and I asked my mother where am I, <coughs> excuse yeah, me, it's quite all right, where am I going to fit into this world and she said, you know, I said what is, what it, who am I? What do I have to offer? And she said, well, dear, you're a visionary. 
So I would say a visionary and a futurist have parallels. Mm -hmm. um, mine is heavily in the artistic area, and uh, you, uh, as a futurist, I would say a very science, uh, science orientation, but I think they're very similar. And basically, those of us who look far ahead to see I'd say a realist sees things as they are, and a futurist or a visionary sees things as they could be. Mm -hmm. And um, I really admire your passion for caring about the planet and all its creatures and your work with the climate mobilization. So I'd like to hear um, how that started and what that means to you and how other people can help. Yeah, so... Um I always, I love the outdoors. I love going hiking, skiing. I, I have to be outside at least, I don't know, every day. I have to go outside and go walking or skiing or something. You know, it just, it feeds my soul. And, um, and so I, I take notice. I like to notice things happening in nature. It's really interesting to me. And, um, and I've always been concerned about environmental issues for like my whole life because I, I care about, you know, we're all part of creation and, and as we need to care and be stewards of creation and, you know, love creation, love others, love, you know. So um, when in 2018, when there was we had already had the devastating flood, a thousand year flood in Duluth in 2012 that had destroyed so much. And then in 2018, in June, another flood destroyed my hometown of Houghton, Michigan. And that was really an eye opener for me because I thought, oh my gosh, my two, you know, two towns where I've lived and there was a, a child who passed away in Houghton. And the thing that was most weird was nobody here in Duluth knew about it because these storms are so frequent. Mm -hmm. And um, so I was like, oh my gosh, this is becoming normalized. I, it, it, no, we have to take action. And so I, I started the Duluth climate mobilization because it is a climate emergency and we all have to um, act accordingly. We need to um, work together and you know, use all of our strengths, whatever we're best at, um, to figure out what to do. Um, we are, of course, individual actions are really important, um, and also actions as a collaborative, and to uh, re redo our energy strategies, and you know, our whole many different systems but we, ha we can do it, and with a positive air about everything. Um, yeah. yeah. Nice. So, not to, just to change things. We have to make big changes, sweeping changes, but I believe that we can, and all together, um, in the spirit of caring and love, and um, just, Brightness and illumination. We can do it. <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Well, <laughs> well, we're very paralleled um, in, you know, my art is all inspired by nature. And mm -hmm. um, I've always felt, besides that it, it soothes me, it heals me, um, it's the giving voice to those who don't have a voice right. to speak up for themselves. And right. I feel like you've, you've come at it from... The science and I've come at it from the art but it's all connected and I see art and science as parallel tracks mm -hmm. and um, I said to one scientist friend um, we're all studying the laws of nature this is the artists are oh. okay Sorry. hold that thought right yeah. okay. The, uh... All right, so our next creative discussion is going to be with Adam G., a London-based interactive media and TV producer and commissioner. 
We met him at Catalyst 2019 and had the opportunity for a quick chat with him. He's won over 90 international awards for his productions, including five BAFTAs, an Emmy, and three Royal Television Society awards. Super cool down-to-earth dude, and I think you'll enjoy what he has to say about creativity. So I wanna talk a little bit about, as a futurist, I know one of the things that you're compassionate and passionate about is the climate. So would you talk about that work? Yeah, so um, I started a group called the Duluth Climate Mobilization in 2018 because I just noticed the greater and greater frequency of these once in a thousand year storms, once in a century storms, and just roads and getting washed out, houses getting washed away, um, and with more and more frequency as though it's normal. And then people just kind of freezing, you know, not feeling like, well, what could they do? And I thought we have to mobilize and we have to um, use our use our talents, our smarts. I mean, there are a lot of talented people in the Duluth area, and I that's what this is about, to, to work together and um, change our way of doing things, change um, things, change our infrastructure to be more sustainable, change our agricultural systems, um, add, add um, more opportunities for people mm -hmm. as well and all work together in the sense of creativity and love for each other and for the planet for the world because we are just you know we are part of nature and that's a wonderful thing nice um, you you said something before the cameras were on uh, that I'd like you to say after I say this but it was about listening and reflecting back, but I want to reflect back something I heard you just say, which is use our smarts, and I know you, so I know it's use your smarts and your hearts. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just, I'm, you know, goofy, and I love alliteration and um, simple and rhyming things, so uh, that's what you represent to me, using your smarts and your hearts. Okay. <laughs> well, that's nice. And, and so, yeah, when I've, uh, when I've worked with you um, and on different projects and so on, I really um, have valued it because you're a person who um, can get to the essence of another person, what their talents and skills are, and then just reflect them back. And just like what you just did just now, hearts and smarts. Beautiful. Thank you. And Thank you. I also want to say, kind of paraphrasing Star Wars, not we are the heroes we are looking for. You nice. know, not, these aren't the droids you're looking for. We are the heroes we are looking for. And nice. I think that this crisis gives us a chance to really be heroic. And let's do it. Let's step mm -hmm. up. Let's do it. Let's, let's step up. And, and use our hearts and our smarts. And, and we, <laughs> we don't. We don't have to be afraid. We we can yes. be strong. We can be respectful. We, we can be resilient, and we can do it. And everybody matters. Yes. Everyone's skills mm -hmm. are needed. Everyone's smarts are needed. I, for example, I don't have skills with like electricity. I am not an electrician. And yesterday I had an electrician come to the lab to help and I was like oh thank you thank you thank you for coming and helping because I don't understand what's going on and he did yes, and right. we were able to resolve a problem right mm -hmm. so we 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 need to work together all of us it's yep. true everybody brings different perspective different insights different strengths and with all of us um, there's nothing that we cannot solve I mm -hmm. totally believe that and the divisiveness helps no one right uh, we're all in this together we're all under the same sky we breathe the air that circulates around the planet the water that circulates um, the earth you know blows around the planet the sands from the Sierra I mean the Sahara 
end up in the Amazon and you know we're we're one and we are all connected so let us remember that and use our hearts to feel that and our smarts to know that and work together so what can people do to help um, well I think um, by uh, even starting with individual actions and also neighborhood by neighborhood working with your neighbors and saying hey gosh like my neighbor and I have a compost pile together you know right. we just decided to do that a couple of years ago and so we're creating a lot less garbage and um, for people who don't have a yard the WLSSD has a whole system where you can collect your compost in these special uh, compostable bags that Marshall Hardware sells for example and then drop it off and WLSSD makes this lovely um, organic compost out of it and um, yeah, so that's one small thing. There, mm -hmm. So starting in neighborhoods and just, um, we have a new sustainability officer at the city and so I'm excited about that. And then of course the Duluth Climate Mobilization, we're all about, let's mobilize, you know, Rosie the Riveter in World War II, you know, we can do it. That same kind of an attitude. Um, right. We're Americans, we're smart, we, we when we, when we need to, we can stand up and uh, solve stuff. That's right. And this is a bigger thing to solve than we've ever had to solve before. I wish it wasn't. Honestly, I don't really want to be doing this. In right. fact, I'd much rather be out skiing and enjoying right. myself. Mm -hmm. But I do, I, I do go and enjoy myself, but I also yeah, work on stuff. Yeah. Well, I'm sure we all feel we wish it wasn't necessary, <laughs> but yeah. It is, yeah. and in order to enjoy skiing and the outdoors and the planet and life itself, we do need to take care of this heavenly body that supports us mm -hmm. and is our home, mm -hmm. and uh, and we all share. Mm -hmm. So, um, yep, I totally agree that you, you got to start with what you can do, and then be an example and collaborate with those close to you, and then make the rings of influence larger yeah. and larger so the climate mobilization um, has meetings or uh, yeah. how can people contact you and we be have, part of it we have a Facebook site and we have meetings pretty much once a month we're also the the two things we're mainly working on now is to get our Duluth City Council to declare a climate emergency and um, there's a resolution that's on our website DuluthClimateMobilization.org and um, then act accordingly. And um, like I said, it's great. We have a sustainability officer, so we, we need to make things change in the city structure itself as well as all the neighborhoods. And like That's I right. said, everyone coming together and working yeah. together. Nice. Um, so yeah, Facebook, website, meetings, we want the city to declare climate emergency. We're going to do something for, we're planning stuff for Earth Day too. Like nice. uh, the Nordic Center, for example, is doing a whole environmental art exhibit. Nice. Um, and then there's these, they have cozy nights where they're, we're working on mending. So like reuse and mend right. things that are broken. And That's they're right. some of the ladies are going to be teaching people how to sew and sew up stuff, repair stuff. Right. Um, out in West Duluth, there's the Dovetail something or another, Dovetail Corners, um, the folk school. And yeah, so right. they teach people how to make stuff too in the maker space. And so right. everybody can, you know, empowering ourselves and not being in fear. Right. That's the main thing is just yeah. not mm -hmm. to be in fear. Right. We are the heroes we are looking for That's to right. be brave and mm -hmm. yes. yes, we can. And, and yep, we can. believe in our own resourcefulness and our compassion mm -hmm. and that we're all in it together. We're all connected and to the planet and the elements and the weather. It's, it's And the universe and beyond. Oh, <laughs> well, <laughs> it is a big story. <laughs> it is a big story. And every little bit matters and every person matters. And, yeah. um, we're all, you know, part of the solution, yeah. and uh, we don't have to 
feel overwhelmed that it's bigger than us, we can do small things and, and contribute in big ways. Yeah, and even just, I mean, I practice just like smiling. Because yes. if you smile, that elevates your mood. And mm -hmm. um, it's a tricky thing because we have, you know, yeah, some really bad things might be happening in the future. But we can't, like, get all down about it. We have to, like, realistically not be in denial about it, mm -hmm. but not get paralyzed and right. not act like... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's, a, it's a, a tricky thing. Well, I like to distill things for myself, and then I find it very helpful with others because it's not so huge. So I like to say it as this, fear makes us myopic. Mm -hmm. We only see what we're afraid of or hear what we're totally focused on the fear. And love expands us. Right. So um, there are, fear has a positive purpose, which is to point out what we need to deal with. Mm -hmm. But oh. love is the way that, a, that we can most effectively empower ourselves to change it. Love the planet and, and don't get stuck in the tiny little fear of, you know, everything is going downhill. Love the planet and don't give up. And join yeah. with other people who feel the same and through our difficult times they can carry us and through their difficult times we carry them. Yeah, and then celebrate, celebrate, you know, even the small victories, small changes that are made. That's right. Um, and then when we are talking about love, one thing that we had talked about before was um, how in English we don't have so many words as, for example, in Greek. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't speak Greek, but I know that there's, um, they define one, there are seven types of love in the Greek language, supposedly. I don't know them all. I only know there's one called agape, which means just sort of love for all humanity and just a general sort of love. And, and that's what we're talking about here, not romantic love or right. mushy gushy love. Right. You know, just like uh, a giant caring. caring. Well, yes. caring is, is a much milder word, I mm -hmm. think, than love. But yeah, so there we are. English is lacking in that one, but oh well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Well, Just like in English, there's not the word for sisu, which is a Finnish word, and it means um, sort of inner strength, guts, determination, but without that sort of crabbiness. <laughs> Just like without aggression without aggression that would be it yeah mm -hmm. just inner strength to go on in the face of all kinds of weird adversity mm -hmm. nice and so sisu i draw upon that from my family back nice well you've um you have enlightened uh, an <laughs> urge in me <laughs> to uh come up with other words for the specific kinds of love. There's, you know, motherly love, and there's friend love, and sibling love, and parental love. I, I once wrote a poem, I don't remember right now, but 11 kinds of love I elucidated in this poem. So oh. now I'm going to come up with words, and I'm going to make them up, because I get to, and uh, start using them. Interesting. Good. Good. Because I, you know, that's how words come into being, and maybe some of them will catch on. It doesn't matter. It's going to be a fun exercise for me to not just delineate these 11 kinds of love, but give a word for each of them. And um, yes, because love should have many words. The, the Inuits have many, many words for blue and many words for ice, and uh, we really don't. You know, because our environment isn't so much ice and blue, so we we are limited. But love should be celebrated and delineated and... Uh, More articulate. Thank you. Articulate love. Yes. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. There was something else I was going to say. And now, oh, yeah. I remembered. Um, so I found a little book that had been my mom's. Um, and it's from 1925, second edition, first edition, 1893. 
Oh. Um, and it's a little book of like daily prayers. So from basically kind of Victorian times. But the interesting thing I've seen, I started, I thought, well, it's, I started the new year and I thought, well, what the heck, it's, you know, short thing to read each day. And I, I come from Christian tradition, so that works for me. And, um, but one thing I noticed was almost every page was about loving kindness. Mm -hmm. Almost, I, not every single one, but many of them are just loving kindness or love. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's also interesting to me and, and I really have enjoyed that. And my mom has passed away, so it's, it was like a little gift from her nice. for nice. frightening my new year. Nice. Very lovely, and it is what all, all religions and spiritual practices have in common is kindness and love. And mm -hmm. so that's you know, what I believe in, and that is my religion as well as you know, taking care of the planet, all its creatures, all its materials, and one another. That's, that's my religion. And it's what they all have in common. So that's true. So I'm not picking sides. <laughs> I'm, and I'm, I am. No. 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 <laughs> that's not what I meant. <laughs> not what I meant at all. Um, no, I see you as not uh, limiting yourself um, and not closing doors or judging. Um, excluding I've never seen you do any of those things you are very open-hearted and it's okay you don't have to take it yeah. Yeah. true true yeah so yeah uh, to wrap this up is there anything else you want to add um, I'm I feel very like we really covered beautiful stuff so I'm good okay. how about you is there anything else you want to um, I, I think we covered a lot there that was we had a variety of stuff. So, uh, is there anything else you'd like to say about creativity or your work? Um, let me think. Um, loving kindness, love, respect, um, and we're all in this together. Nice. Yeah. So true. All right. Yeah, well, thank you for coming on the show and letting us take you on the tour and ask you all sorts of questions and share your ideas about the world and creativity. <laughs> well, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Glad to have you, and thank you guys for watching. This has been The Creativity Show. See you next time. Bye-bye. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> we did it. I want to let you know, my mother, Claire Cooley, is an amazing artist and creativity coach. If you ever want help with gaining greater access to your imagination and confidence to express it and the courage to share it with others, then she's the person to go to. So please reach out to her or reach out to me on how to reach out to her and we'll get you connected. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time on The Creativity Show.